Welcome to the Potter Blog site, August 7th, 2014. Uh, there's been some action taken uh, by the Centers for Disease Control that uh, indicates that they expect a large outbreak of Ebola in the United States. Uh, basically what they've done is they've told uh, your local doctor and hospital <clears throat> that there's no need for these uh, spacesuit type precautions on Ebola. Yeah. Normally, or prior to this outbreak, CDC required that if you're going to deal with Ebola in any way, you had to be in a biosafety level 4, BSL-4. That's basically meant you were in a space suit and you had to handle the Ebola virus inside of a spacecraft and you had to shower and everything afterwards. And here you see a guy getting decontaminated even in a space suit. Now, with all those requirements, What you don't know is, is that there are only 22 hospital beds capable of treating patients infected by the de deadly Ebola virus in the United States, 10 of, 10 of which are in Nebraska. So any more than 22 Ebola patients in this country overwhelms the medical system. And if the medical system becomes overwhelmed, then these Ebola patients basically don't have, they're not at any sort of biosafety level at that point. So it appears what the CDC has done has decided it's better to put Ebola patients in biosafety level one conditions and risk the lives of uh, doctor, doctors and hospital staff and rather than shut down hospitals every time an Ebola patient comes in because in essence what that means is the Ebola patient then is under no biosafety containment and has uh, general access to the public. So by taking this action, what they've done is they've decided to take action by reducing these safety levels and hopefully that will slow the spread of Ebola because a little bit of protection is better than no protection. So what you end up having here is basically the concept that it's going to be a large Ebola outbreak. And if it is a large outbreak, it's not 100% sure, but it's, they're planning for it to be. If it is a large outbreak, then the hospitals eventually will become overwhelmed anyways, and the doctors and hospital staff will eventually come down with Ebola anyways. So it's better to risk them early and have a modicum of uh, biosafety on these uh, Ebola patients than it is to just let the Ebola patients not have any treatment at all. Now, of course, some of you may not think that this is the case, but you don't understand how risky the government sees uh, Ebola as being. Now, if we look here at this, uh, notice this statement, high consequence. This uh, occurred on April 8th. Uh, from uh, Carmen J. Spencer, Joint Program Executive Officer for Chemical and Biological Defense before the House Armed Services Committee. Now we reported this back on April. In essence, what this what happened here is back in April, the Department of Defense decided to uh, deploy Ebola detectors. <coughs> excuse me, to all to National Guard units in all 50 states. And at that time, they're telling Congress that they deployed these additional diagnostic assays for a high consequence low probability threat agents. And we see here hemorrhagic fever. So what they were telling Congress at the time was is even though we're going to deploy these Ebola detection kits to all 50 states, we don't actually think Ebola is going to come to the United States. But we're doing it because if Ebola did come, it would be high consequence. And that's exactly what uh, this uh, double standard that uh, CDC is putting on healthcare workers indicates they're expecting a high consequence outbreak. Now, this is not lost on the doctors. Uh, there was a telecon on August 5th uh, put out by the CDC called uh, what, what U.S. Hospitals Need to Know to Prepare for Ebola Virus Disease. And uh, basically what the CDC told the hospitals is, is you can use a flimsy mask, goggles, mask, and gloves and gown 
and you'll be protected from Ebola. Well, think of it this way. Somebody could tell you that go walk across this balance beam in the gym. Anybody can walk across a balance beam. Well, that's true if this balance beam is only two or three feet off the ground and you are have a padded gym floor underneath you. You take that same balance beam and you put it up a thousand feet in the sky, very few people can walk across it without massive amounts of other protection. And the reason is because the penalty of failure is so high. So this is the double talk that CDC is putting out. They're basically saying anybody can walk across the balance beam therefore it's okay for you to walk across that balance beam whether or not it's three feet off the ground or a thousand feet off the ground it doesn't matter well yes it does matter because the uh, consequences are so high now the hospitals have not noticed this and in this uh, telecom with the CDC on August 5th there were multiple questions pointing out this double standard here's one from Barbara Russell it says, it's very hard to convince emergency room staff and others that we just have to wear gown and gloves and mask. And then we see on TV, them in all their suits head to toe in this room where they say they're going to burn everything that comes out of them. So yes, they're aware that's a double standard. They're, I don't think the doctors are aware of why it's a double standard. It's basically a... Uh, operations research systems uh, optimization problem and it says basically that uh, even though you're going to put your doctors at risk it's better than putting them at risk and getting a modicum, modicum, modicum of containment on these patients than it is not having any capability for these patients to be treated or uh, limiting their access to the public so at the end, you're leave, left with really only two options concerning CDC's PPE guidance. You, know, you can either believe that the CDC is willing to risk the lives of medical personnel out of sheer incompetence. You know, basically, that incompetence would be telling them it's okay to walk across a balance beam at three feet and at a thousand feet because it's in either way it's the exact same process the penalty of failure plays no plays no part in that process therefore it doesn't matter that would be sheer incompetence or you believe the CDC must risk lives of medical personnel because it's a lesser of evils which serves to reduce the speed but likely not the size of the Ebola outbreak basically this just buys time and there is a uh, an uh, experimental Ebola vaccine out there. It's based off, off the uh, rabies vaccine and uh, we've covered that before. Could be that's what they're trying to buy their time for. Never know. Could also be that the whole thing just fades away and goes away. And that would be good. But you can't downplay the fact that the CDC is preparing for the worst case and has taken actions directing hospitals and medical staff to take actions that place them at extremely high risk of failure. Be prepared.